Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Pokemon Coliseum. In the last episode, we met the most obnoxious person in the game. Not really the most obnoxious person, but set off the most obnoxious alarm, destroying one of my favorite musics in the game. Musics? Music. Whatever. <laughs> and we also defeated Scrub and made it to the very end of the Shadow Pokemon Lab here. Before you head straight down this way, just a hang a left here because you got a free item here. It's a HP up can be handy to give to one of your more defensive Pokemon, or one of your sort of tankier Pokemon. So with that in mind, Umbreon, here you go, pal. And I actually want to switch my team around a little bit. I definitely don't want Twiglet at the front. I think I'm going to send Umbreon and Espeon out at the beginning, uh, just because Umbreon can help sort of stall the team a little bit, and Espeon uh, is our damage dealer. And I want to save Watson and Twiglet for the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here we go. All right, let's do this. Dun dun dun. Good. The disc has been scrubbed of all data. That's done it. What? How did you get in without my notice? I mean, there's been an alarm blaring for a very long time. Also, is that a ditto in, on the monitor at the background there? Actually, I don't know what that Pokemon is meant to be, but it's kind of adorable. And it looks like it's getting destroyed, but uh, it also kind of looks like it's winking at me. <laughs> Ah, I see. You must be the much-talked-about Dazza. Little did I expect to see you here. I am Ayn. I am in charge of the Shadow Pokemon Lab. No one must be allowed to interfere with our Shadow Pokemon plan. I won't allow it. Let me acquaint you with the power of my Shadow Pokemon. Yes, indeedy. We are finally battling with Ayn, leader of the Shadow Pokemon Lab, and the person behind the Shadow Pokemon well, not really behind the plan, but, you know, he's he's behind turning them all into Shadow Pokemon, which is kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. So, Ayn does have a tactic, just like the other guys had a tactic as well. Um, you know, Dakin would use Protect and Earthquake. Um, uh, I'm going to go Huntel here. Uh, yeah, Dakin would use Protect and Earthquake. Uh, Venus would use Attract. Ayn's, or Ayn's tactic here is to use Rain Dance. In fact, both of his Pokemon at the front here uh, benefit from the... Well, actually, no, I don't think they both benefit from the Rain, but they both have Rain Dance, and they will both likely use Rain Dance on the first turn just to ensure he gets it set up. Um, Huntail actually does get increased speed through Rain, so hopefully... I mean, hopefully he'll just hit himself in confusion, but chances are it was only going to use Rain Dance anyway. Um, so yeah, this, this could be a bit of a tough battle. Um, Rain, of course, powers up your uh, water-type moves, but it also makes Thunder hit 100% of the time. And, of course, that is his... Wow, you're really using Confuse Ray on me? That's my tactic, dude. That's not cool. <laughs> and that is obviously his tactic as well, because he's got a couple of Pokémon with the moves Thunder. And, in fact... Please hit. Please hit. Oh, dang it. In fact, Lantern is one of them. So, yeah, got to be careful of that. That's why I'm hoping I can get a Confuse Ray out on the Lantern before it gets a chance to attack me. As you can see, all of his Pokemon are also in the high level 40s, which could be a problem. Hopefully this Confusion hits. Uh-oh. Okay, so he used Confuse Ray on both of our... Wow. No, he didn't use Confuse Ray on both of our Pokemon. He used Confuse Ray on Espeon twice. He really wanted Espeon to be confused. Uh, I'm actually going to use... Hmm... I'm not going to use Toxic. I'm going to just focus on that Lantern. Huntail already snapped out Confusion. Great. Bite is obviously going to target Espeon here. Ooh, ouch. Okay, Espeon is confused. Please, 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 please. Yes, Psybeam hit. Fantastic. I'm surprised that Lantern hasn't tried using uh, Thunder yet. Just went with the Confuse Ray last turn. Probably going to try and use it this time. Hopefully Faint Attack can take it out. Oh, not quite. Are you kidding me? Please hurt yourself with confusion. Please. Be nice to me, game. Yes! Lantern took itself out. Okay. As one of his tough Pokemon out, um, I am actually quite scared of Lantern at times. Uh, it's, it's thunder moves can be quite damaging. Okay, we have Altaria, uh, a dragon flying type Pokemon. If you've got uh, an ice type move, use it. It will probably one-shot Altaria. However, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about getting it because in fact, I think Toxic's probably the better way to go. I'm going to Confuse it to begin with, just in case. And I'm going to go with the, uh, the Confuse Ray. Oh, not the Confuse Ray, the, the Side Beam. But that's probably going to ooh, do a lot of damage. Okay, come on, Espeon. You're a hard hitter. No, don't hard hit yourself. Oh, 
<laughs> oh dear. Okay, so. I need to save Watson. I definitely need to save Watson. I'm, I'm gonna have to send out Equilibrium, because otherwise the water moves are gonna do too much damage to uh, Twiglet and to Vulcan. Intimidate can kind of help us, I guess. I mean, these Pokemon aren't really using um, moves that are going to be helpful. Pursuit. Pursuit is an interesting move, because Pursuit will do um, twice as much damage if you choose to switch out, or if the target switches out. Okay, there's the Confuse Ray. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I'm actually going to target Altario with Toxic as well, um, just to try and help take it down a bit quicker because I don't have moves that are going to be very good against it. So Toxic will definitely help with that. I'm going to go for a triple spin or triple kick on Huntail. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, what a pain in the butt. Equilibrium is confused. Hurt itself in confusion. Of course, of course. I expect nothing less. Altari hurt itself in confusion. That's good. That's good. We get the free Toxic out now. Very good, very fine indeed. Uh, hopefully the rain stops soon. I know it lasts five turns, but I don't know how many turns it's actually been yet. Nice, Altaria is badly poisoned, that's what I like to see. The rain stopped, fantastic. So this Huntail is gonna probably try and put up another rain dance. Uh, I'm not sure if Altaria knows it or not, but uh, I definitely wanna try and confuse the Huntail again. In Equilibrium, you can just triple kick. Come on, snap out of your confusion, pal. Oh no, stop hurting yourself. At least it doesn't do the confusion check all three kicks. Uh-oh, Altaria used Fly. That is probably going to be targeting on um, Equilibrium. Oh boy. So it seems that Iron also has a secondary tactic, and that's to confuse us. Luckily, confusion works in our favor there with Huntail. Very good. Okay, hurt by Poison is what I'd like to see. Uh, Umbreon, I think I'm going to get you to focus on the Huntail just because... Oh, snapped out of confusion, thank goodness. Just because we actually need to start doing damage to this Huntail. I'm surprised Huntail hasn't used Rain Dance again, but... Okay, that did hardly anything. <laughs> uh, yes, hurt itself in confusion, that's what I like to see. It means its, its turn was completely pointless. Okay, that was decent, that was pretty decent. Please don't use Rain Dance. Yes, okay. I'm quite comfortable with Huntail getting taken out this turn. Um, so I think what I want to do... I want to focus on Altaria, and I'll triple kick the Huntail. Just because I know that triple kick is going to do more against Huntail than it will on Altaria. And it only hit one time. Are you kidding me? Altaria used Toxic. Oh, On Equilibrium. I'll tell you what, that's actually not that bad. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Equilibrium isn't going to last too much longer anyway. I just hope that we can take care of his, um, his Huntail fairly soon. Please hurt yourself. Oh, dang it. Rain Dance. No. Oh, that is huge for his team for what we're about to come against. Oh, boy. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this. Equilibrium is hurt by poison. Okay, Altaria's hurt by poison, so Altaria's going down this round. In fact, I think both of their Pokemon are going down. Um, he does have two more Pokemon left, though, so... Okay, Huntail is down for the count. So we get to see what he's going to send out instead. I actually can't remember his, his next Pokemon. It's not going to be Gorbis, is it? That's Huntail's counterpart. That's a nice chunk of XP there. Oh, it's a Golbat! Oh, man, if only I had, um... If only I had Espeon out still. Of course, Triple Kick is going to do nothing against it. Oh, man. Okay. And Altari flew up high, but the Poison will probably take it out. That's a shame. Okay, what do we do here? Hmm. Obviously, we're going to have to target the Golbat. Do I confuse Ray? Well, Altari got taken out by Poison while it's flying, so that's good. Well, good for us, I guess, but not good for the Altari. Okay, so Ayn has got his last Pokemon to send out, and it's the legendary beast Raikou. Oh yes, and of course, it's a shadow Pokemon. The third and final legendary beast. Raikou is probably the most usable of the lot, actually, considering it has access to Rain Dance once purified, and also Thunder, which hits when raining 100% of the time. 
fantastic special stats means Raikou can take hits and deal them out quickly thanks to its speed, just watch out for its low physical defense. To help combat this, Raikou does learn Reflect at level 51, which can help you out uh, defensively quite a lot, and Crunch at level 61 to give you more options for using that special attack stat. Just get rid of Leer and Quick Attack for those two moves, and you're onto a winner with this Pokemon. Luckily that Wing Attack didn't do too much against us, but I am... I'm kind of scared again about this Raikou. Obviously, it's immensely fast. I don't want to confuse Ray. I don't want to toxic it. While the rain is out, its thunder is going to be doing a lot of damage. It's very quick. I think I'm just going to faint attack the Golbat again. And I'm going to try and paralyze this Raikou to shut it down. Thunder won't do too much if it's targeting Ampharos. And luckily, Umbreon is a complete beastie tank. If it gets paralyzed, and that's bad. Please don't confuse Ray. Amphros, please leave Watson alone. Okay, that is fine. We got a free Thunder Wave out of that turn. I am okay with that. That's the main thing I wanted to do. Faint Attack still hits as well. Okay, that's good. So in terms of actually fighting this... Um, in terms of actually fighting this Raikou, I'm a little bit worried about it because it's fast and it hits strong. But at the same time, it's no longer fast. Its speed just got cut in half, which is great. Its Thunder is 100% accurate, but then the only other moves it's got is um, Shadow Rush, because obviously it can't hit us with, uh, it can't set up a Rain Dance, which is great. Um, it's got Quick Attack, which is going to do hardly anything, because it doesn't have a great attack stat, and it's a low-powered move anyway. Or it can use Leer to lower our defense, which I am i don't think is going to do much. Looks like Umbreon has taken the brunt of the damage, which is good. Uh, well, obviously it's not good that we're taking damage. Gives us a chance to set up a Light Screen, which is definitely going to help, because I think both of his Pokémon are going to be using special attacks, and it's good to know that Raikou goes last as well. If I can keep Ampharos out, I've got to start calling him Watson <laughs> instead of Ampharos. If I can keep Watson out, then that would be great. The rain has stopped. Fantastic. Okay, so let's try and take care of this Golbat. Um, let's go with a Thunderbolt just in case Faint Attack misses, and Thunderbolt obviously isn't going to do too much against Raikou because it's not going to be very effective. Okay, fingers crossed. Umbreon flinched. Okay, that's fine. Thunderbolt will take care of the Golbat, no problem. Okay, so now what we got to face is a level 40 legendary Pokemon, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> Paralyzing can't move. That's what I like to see. Umbreon, honestly, you're not going to be doing much, pal. So let's hit it with that. Umbreon, come on, please attack. Yes, faint attack. Let's see how much this does. I'm expecting not a lot because Raikou's special defense is quite high up there. I want to see how much these moves are going to do, so that I can avoid any overpowering critical hits. Yeah, you see, that didn't do a lot. That did maybe like a third of Raikou's health. Raikou used Thunder, but that shouldn't do too much. It's probably going to target Umbreon as well. Yeah. You see, I feel like we've got a pretty good setup going here. Um, I'm okay for Umbreon to take a hit, because I think... Snapped out of confusion. Fantastic. I think after this turn, I'm going to start hitting it with the balls. Um, it's actually been quite a few turns as well, so I might try throwing some timer balls. Alright, Thundershock, come on, get it into the red. Not quite. One more Thundershock, and I'll be happy to, um... Uh-oh, uh-oh, Shadow Rush. Uh-oh, record damage incoming. Record damage incoming. <gasps> Ooh, okay, <laughs> maybe no more Thundershocks. No more Thundershocks indeed. I'd love to send out Espeon um, and throw up a Reflect. Reflect and Light Screen at the same time can help us. Um, quite a lot, but I think I'm going to have to start throwing Pokeballs now. Can Twiglet do anything that's good? No, Twiglet should not do any moves. Alright, let's throw a Timer Ball and hope we get lucky. And on Watson's turn, I'm going to go for another Light Screen, just hoping that the Light Screen runs out. Alright, first Timer Ball, let's go, let's catch this thing. Red Health, Paralyze, Raikou, get in the ball, stay in the ball. Ein's Pokemon is mine's Pokemon. One, two... Three! Oh, yes! Oh, that was beautiful! Oh, that battle went way better than I thought it would go. This power, it, it defies belief. Oh my gosh. I am so happy with how that turned out. Humph, <laughs> your struggle to get here was all in vain. The shadow Pokemon we produced have already been moved elsewhere. And that, of course, includes the ultimate shadow Pokemon I have created for the boss. <laughs> Leg it. Alright, and with that, he leaves behind a sparkly. 
a data ROM. Okay, so we'll have to do something with that. And of course, you want to go over here and grab TM26. Best item you can probably pick up in the entire game. This is TM26. Earthquake. I was looking for it. It was right at the top of the list. Oh, yes. Earthquake. Very strong move. Very powerful. And, oh, are we going to have fun with it? <laughs> and with that, we can finally wrap up the Shadow Pokemon Lab. We go to go through this one-way door here, which is totally unnecessary. They could have made that a two-way door and just made this uh, <laughs> made this area one episode long rather than four. But we can finally leave. The obnoxious alarm blaring will stop, I think. The, the lab is completely abandoned. If you miss snagging Raikou, you'll actually be able to get another chance to snag it before the end of the game. And that will be very... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Sorry, my controller just vibrated a lot. That'll actually be very short. Um, or that'll, that'll happen very shortly. So, yeah, no worries if you didn't snag Raikou. Uh, this is Ned. If you find any data at the Shadow Pokemon Lab, please bring it to me in the under. I'll be waiting. How convenient. We just got some data. And now Ned is like, if you find any data, br please bring it to me. So, let's head to the under. Obviously, we know the way there. Neeroom. I miss Espeon and Umbreon riding shotgun. Tui can just... Uh, Tui? <laughs> yes, the um, the holiday tour operating service here in the UK called Tui can just ride at the back. It's fine. No, Rui can ri ride at the back. Uh, while we're here, we might as well heal, unless we got an automatic heal. We did not. You know, I was really expecting Espeon to be doing a lot more of that battle. I'm fairly certain Espeon's Psybeam could have one-shot them, uh, the Golbat. Um, but, hey, we were lucky enough to get a couple of Phaeton Attacks in and a Thunderbolt, and that was good enough. That was good enough indeed. Alright, let's head on down this way. And see if we can't find Net. Well, we know where he is. We'll get that item box eventually, but honestly, it's not really worth it. <laughs> You get that item box very late in the post game, and for what it is, I mean, you, you guys are probably thinking, oh, it's the Master Ball, or it's the uh, another time flute, like the third and final time flute, but but it's not. It's not. It's not really worth getting, in my opinion, but it can be handy. All right, Nat, here you go. Oh, Dazza, how'd it go? Did you find any data? Yes. Oh, now this looks interesting. Let's scope it out right away. Oh, he's got the dancing Ditto Pokemon on the screen as well. It might just be a de deformed Pikachu, to be honest. This data ROM appears to contain a list of shadow Pokemon that have been made so far. Ah, but no. Looks like they wiped the data. Dazza, please leave this with me. I'll somehow try retrieving the information from the data ROM, even if it means going over it little by little. Dazza, as soon as I discover anything, I'll email your PDA. Thank you, Net. So, with that all said and done, we're going to do one more thing before the episode finishes here today. Uh, what I want to do is I want to come to the shop here in the under uh, and purchase a TM. Mm -hmm. So we do have a bunch of TMs down here which can be helpful. Also, I need to get some Hyper Potions, don't I? Yeah, because I've got 28,000. Uh, so I went through all these TMs before, but I think the one that we want to get... Uh, but, 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 but it's TM17 for 3,000. Okay. I'm also going to buy some Hyper Potions. I'm going to buy like... 10 of them. I'm going to buy 12 of them. <laughs> I want to leave myself with a little bit of money because there might be some other TMs that I want to purchase. Okay, so with that said and done, let's go ahead and use TM17 and I'm going to use this on Espeon. And yeah, we'll uh, get rid of a different move. I think I'm going to get rid of Helping Hand. I like using Helping Hand in situations where I'm using something like Surf, uh, because it can help power up Surf, but I don't have any Pokemon with me that can learn Surf, so I think Protect is going to be more useful. I'm also going to use Earthquake, and since I don't have any Pokemon um, which are ground types, I've got two Pokemon that I'm trying to decide who to use it, uh, who to use it on, either Vulcan or Twiglet. Oh man. See, I was going to go with Twiglet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a look at their stats. And whoever's got the highest physical attack, which is Pseudo Widow just, I'm going to teach it to Pseudo Widow. Or sorry, I'm going to teach it to Twiglet. It makes sense. It means that we can now take on some, some other um, uh, electric types uh, with a super effective ground type move. 
Uh, so that could be quite good. Uh, let's get rid of Flail, I think. There we go. Da -da -da, twiglet Land Earthquake. I might regret that, I'm not sure. If only I had like two Earthquake TMs, I would definitely use one on Vulcan. All right, so now again for the third time with that all said and done, we're gonna use the F disc here and leave the under. Um, but on the way out, we've got to we've got to talk to a certain someone when we eventually you know make our way out. Come on now, come on. This episode's gone a little bit longer than I thought it would, but hey, I'm just glad we managed to get Raiko and Ein, Ein defeated on the first turn or first time. That was. I have had some immense luck catching these legendary Pokemon. I've caught them all first time, I think? No, 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 I messed up with Entei. Entei killed us. Uh, this guy, we finally finished work on that gigantic tower. But who did it take a long time to build or what? I don't know when the last time I went back home. You, go on up there and see it for yourselves. It's clean and shiny. It's what I like to call gorgeous. And we will be doing that in the next episode, guys. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of Pokemon Coliseum. Next time we'll be heading to Real Gam Tower, an immense tower that was finally completed as Cypher's base. It has a Coliseum on top. See you guys then. Bye bye.